2002. We did touring at different uh, um, churches and outreach ministries and stuff like that around Houston. And that was my first like experience with music. And it was like, ever since then, I kind of was chasing that. Cause it was so fun. you And it was like, man, we were supposed to make it. But the dude that was like running the group, our manager, he ended up having to move right in the middle of us recording an album to Dallas. And you know, when you 12, 13, you don't understand somebody got to move cause they family and they got a better job. So you just like, oh man, dude, like we missed the opportunity. But it always stayed there. And I want to say about four, three, about three years ago, I really, really got heavy, heavy back into music. In between that gap, I was always recording and always writing, but I got heavily, heavily back into music about, um, I want to say three years ago. I dropped a mixtape in 20, 2013 or whatever, but that was just, you know, a lot of flows, some stuff like that. I, and I did it on that piff, so it wasn't nothing like major. Last year, I dropped the first project, like, since I was, like, a teenager. My first real, real project called Vintage. Got check, we got to check that. Y'all go check that out. Everybody that's watching this, man, my music is on all outlets. So everybody that's going to watch this, y'all got to go check out. You got to follow my music from the beginning to be able to get where we're at now because it's creative growth and everything is intertwined on every album is going to be connected to the last album. I, I don't just do this like, oh, I'm just going to put out some songs. No, I do this. Like, I'm telling a story. These are books and chapters in my life. You know what I mean? So it's going to all be interconnected and it's all going to make sense. So let's t get into the video that we just watched. So... First of all, tell me about the song before the concept of the video ever came about. How did that song come about? And uh, tell me a little bit about how all of that came together. I was having an argument with one of my friends about who was better, Kendrick or Drake. And, and he was on the Drake. He was on Drake's side, and I was on I, uh, I was on Kendrick's side. And for different reasons, um, uh, I like both of the artists, so I'm not like, you know, against Drake or anything like that, but, and then I was just like, man, I'm colder than all of this. <laughs> I'm colder than everybody, bro. I'm colder than your favorite rapper. And like, when I said that, that's how I came up with the hook. Everything is, like I said, real life experiences. So uh, I actually made this song about seven, eight years ago. I just rewrote the second verse and the third verse. But yeah, I made this song. This song, that song, a, a portion of that song was on my first mixtape that came out, The Overflows on that piff or whatever, about seven, eight years ago when I was uh, I was performing at Kickback Sundays. I don't know if you uh, heard about Kickback Sundays, Miss Teresa, SF2, Dope Beasy. It used to be like this nice little outlet where they let artists in Houston uh, get on stage and just showcase their talents. Or whatever so I, and i met a lot of people there too so uh, a lot of uh good people so yeah that's basically how the song came about the idea for the song was just like i'm 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 colder than everybody and i want to let people know so i i came up with something catchy and, and you know the flow the verses is, they just write themselves it's so simple so easy but uh also i have to stress this that song the album that's coming out is Republican versus Democrat. So that song is a Democrat. Basically, it's based off my point of view of the two parties. I feel like the Republicans are the naturally entitled party. They've been around for longer. Um, typically, people with money, they're more boisterous, less hardworking. And so all of the songs that are going to be on Still Can Red, which drops on October 28th, are Republicans. That song, even as you saw the video title, the, cover, the colder then, when you see it, is blue. And I wear blue in that video to signify this song is a Democrat. So that song is a little bit more hardworking. It's a little bit more cool, but it's very intelligent. You see what I'm, It shows you why it's intelligent. 
it's it's on the Democrat side of things. The uh, I'm just I just gotta let that be known because it's gonna make. Man, I'm talking about this CD is so well thought out. Like I really, really, really went in depth with this because we're dealing with the election right now. So yeah, basically you got Republican songs versus Democrat songs, and that song is a Democrat or whatever. It's 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 you know kind of like Obama. It's cool. It's uh, the that's the that's the dirt off your shoulder. We ain't worried about them over there. <laughs> So yeah, that's that, but that's basically the whole idea behind the song and the album. The album is red versus blue, uh, Republican versus Republican ideals. I'm not gonna say Republican because I didn't get too deep into politics in the album, but just like the idea of them and, as as I look at them. So yeah, that's what that that's what that is. You know, I've never heard anyone really sum up Republican Party so efficiently. <laughs> I it really say. has nothing to do with anything but money and entitlement, right? Yep, yep. yep. But, and that's the exact same way I feel about the Dallas Cowboy fans. But, you know, that's... <laughs> <laughs> yeah! <laughs> I like that. Little subtle jab. Little nice little jab. Yes, that that cowboy fans are Republicans. Cowboy fans is the exact same way, but you know that's neither here nor there. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but no, we uh, can't we can't say too much right now. Our team, we trying to we trying to do something. I don't know what the Texans trying. You to do. said we. I, I, I mean, I'm speaking for my for Houston. Yeah, I, I'm not sure who you. your I'm, team is. I'm, I'm Saints all the way. Okay, and okay. I'm born and raised in Houston, but I'm a Saints fan because um, I just always see the fans of the Saints come together and, and the yeah. spirit of New Orleans is in that team. Like, it's in that team. They're about family. Um, you don't ever see Drew Brees complaining on the field. He just on to the next play. Yep, he ain't yep. hard on his players. He ain't on the sideline pouting and in his feelings. Like, and uh, yeah, I, I love how they move uh, yep, even more yep. so than a fan of how they play. I'm a fan of how they move as a That's team. That's good. I, I never, you know what? I've never, I always, with sports, I always look at teams like, um, the ones that I like, I never really like looked at it like that. Oh, I'm gonna gravitate or look at a team just based off of the fact of how they operate and work together. That's 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 a dope way to. Uh, pick yeah, up. it's. I mean, uh, I mean, football is is uh like goes hand in hand with life. You know, like yep, yep. moving, paying attention to each other, blocking for each other, working together to accomplish goals. It, take, and it takes 11 people on every play for that play does. to go right. Yep, it yep. does. And one person messes up, it takes a whole team down, but you got to decide um, if, if that's going to be it for you, how you're going to react to those situations. And I love how the Saints react. Yeah, they don't. Yeah, yeah. They ride for each other. Even if they might be beefing in the locker room, you don't never see it on that You're field. You don't see it. You yeah, case see in, it on that case, field. Case in point, like earlier when uh, this year, Drew Brees made some comments that people felt like were insensitive. Mm -hmm. But it's mm -hmm. like, and, and even the black players on the team was like going at him. But about a week or two later, like they was back. Yep. Tightly and so, yeah, and, right. and right. Drew stepped up and he apologized too. Exactly. And yeah, he because. said, you know, he had a misunderstanding and that's that's what family is about, right? We don't all have to have the exact same views. We don't all have to be Democrat or Republican or yep. even vote, but we all have to have the same ideas in mind for the future of our community. That's... It's that's crazy because that's like what the the album went when I when I bring both of them together I'm gonna call it the deluxe edition and I'm gonna add extra tracks and I feel like that's what it is like I put both of them together and see like what can happen when you put these things together and they start working together mm. you see what I'm saying what kind of difference can you make because I mean honestly my understanding and in my estimation or whatever I always want to let it be known this is just how I feel um these pol these politicians is all the same. It's like it's, it's like it's like it's like you got a defense attorney and you have a prosecutor, 
But behind closed doors, they cool. They go to lunch. But they're cool, they, yeah. They're they, crazy, they, but, mm. it, but it's messed up because the system is messed up. Just like with court, the system is messed up with politics because deep down behind closed doors, they all on the same team. They making decisions like you might have a lawyer, uh, a defense attorney who's trying to uh, uh, help get somebody free that's in jail. That the first crime they ever committed, right. something like that. But when they go into, um, they don't they don't talk about it in court. They talk about it outside of court at lunch. And then the dude will be like, nope, I'm not going to give you that deal because uh, last week you stood me up for dinner or so." It's like yeah. you basing somebody's freedom based freedom. off of the fact of mm. your relationship with this person. Y'all not going over the case. Mm. Y'all not worried about that. Yeah. It's about connections and network and all of those things. So it's, it's the same thing with politics to me. Because it's like a whole bunch of them get up there and tell you a whole bunch of stuff or whatever that they gonna do. When deep down, you even know they can't do nothing. Look at what they did to Obama. This man tried to pass stuff and tried to get stuff passed, but because the Senate or the House was controlled by Republicans, he couldn't get anything passed. Yeah. So deep down, these people, they only, I look at it like um, the, the, the country is a business. And, and what's the head of a business? the chairman, the CEO, and that's what the president is. He don't really get to make too many decisions. He just the fall man. He the face. That's it. Yeah. So like, yeah. I I, I, I've gotten to the point to where no, it's like... And I, I even tell people like, I, I, I don't even get into too many political related conversations with people because I feel like at the end of the day, right, like I'm oh, like, I'm an abolitionist. <laughs> Look, you know, I feel like get rid of the system, start a whole new system. I'm, revo I'm revolutionary too, right along. I'm yeah. right with you. I don't, uh, <laughs> yeah, that is it, like none of it. Well, for one, I'm, I'm going to say this and we're going to get back into yeah, our interview. Look, see, that's, I mean, yeah. I, for one, like uh, when you look at how how this system was built, right? Like, yeah. what was it built on? Was it built Ex with equal opportunity in mind? A lot of those same laws, a lot of those same mindsets, a lot of that is ingrained into the very ground that we walk on. Exactly. Anyway. Yes. So why are yes. we expecting for any kind of, of result to come out of it for people who it I wasn't mean, even built for. It wasn't first. made for. Exactly, it man. Made it's for us. We it's crazy. We, we, we survived uh, what we weren't supposed to survive, but it wasn't made to benefit us. So now yep. we gotta we gotta maneuver different. So yep. yeah, that's that, to get back. <laughs> to get, look, look to get back on topic. That's what the the blue album is going. The, the still can blue. It's more like I said. It's 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 into those topics. Like that's right. what still can't blue. It's about like man, you the the hardworking people that that can't get a break. You know what I mean? The people that you just look around and it's like you understand generational wealth and you want it, but it's like the system is set up to where we can't. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like we can't, all this stuff coming out right now, where they showing how we've been. Uh, the, the banks literally were told to deny people of yes. color from yes. being able to get houses or get loans or get things for years and years and years. So you have somebody that might say, oh, well, why don't y'all just go? Hey man, y'all didn't put so much, so many different layers of failure in between us and success and where we come from. It's, we gotta go through so many failures in order to achieve that. And that can break so many people mentally. Oh. It could break you. If you're not mm -hmm. really, really mentally tough, you just gonna end up like just working a regular job and just being mm. satisfied and being content with all of the gifts and talents that we have. That's what the Blue Album is about, having all the gifts and the talents and trying to find a way to make it. The Red Album is like I said, it's the natural winners. Naturally, like, you know, the songs that you listen to, you're like, okay, yep, yeah, that's a good song. Yep, I, I like the beat, I get it, I get why he made it. Yep, okay, that's cool. And I feel like the album, I had to separate them because I was battling my, it was me battling myself. You mm. see what I'm saying? Like that side of me that's like that, that's boisterous, that's 
I'm finna, man, you know what? I'm finna let these dudes know, like, they cannot mess with me with this rap stuff. Mm -hmm. Versus the other side of me that wants to tell a story, that wants to talk about different things that are motivating, that, that'll that build you up. So I had to separate them to be able to, you know, make it make sense. So, yeah, that's 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 good. You hit that right on the nose. We got a lot of uh, um, similar viewpoints. Yes, yes, yeah. yes. And, you know, I... I look at it as, you know, in all reality, our generation is different, right? Like what we need is different. And all of these other people who are running around and running the country telling us what we need and, and how to thrive without asking us, what do we want? What do without we need? Without ever having been in our situation. Without they ever have no, having been in our situation. Come live in, I, go live in one of these poverty stricken areas for two weeks and tell me if you're gonna give me that same speech on, this is how you should survive. If you're in that, you've never been in that predicament. You've never been in that predicament. You've never been in that predicament yes so you know, you yeah man so <laughs> which leads into your video first of all it is that your wife at the beginning of the video yes that's my wife that's my baby <laughs> is, uh, oh, man i love it yeah something she something about her is just kind of like she she leaned into that part but it was like she was really acting but she was playing with you that's my fault look <laughs> but man, I would she tell was you. playing with you so, but it was so, like she leaned into it i was like i had oh. i had to uh i had to kind of do that like um basically we wanted to recreate something that we go through at the house a lot my dad was a store manager for wieners men's warehouse so he's a real strickler on you know being nice representing yourself you know, when you step outside this house, you got to represent this. You know what I mean? You got to look good. I used to have to get haircuts two times a week. All that, like, picking your clothes out, how I hang my clothes up. Your red shirts need to be with the reds and the blues. He was, like, real big on that. And so my wife, my wife is actually from Chicago. So she's a different persona type than a lot of people that, than Southern. She's a little bit more, <laughs> you know, they they come from a different lineage up there. But I told her I wanted to recreate it because she always talk about me whenever we're getting ready to go somewhere. I take a night, you know, I take me a cool, you know, 20, 30 minutes to try and find some stuff and put some stuff together. She was like, oh, my gosh, you take so long. And I wanted to recreate it. But uh, while we were there, she was playing. It's funny you said that. It's so funny you said that because she was playing at first and she was doing a lot of smiling. And I was like, well, I know it's a skit, but in my mind, I'm like, I want it to look real. You know what I mean? So I started upsetting her. She would come in and she would start saying, I was like, nope, that ain't right. So, cause I wanted to make her actually get mad with me. You know what I mean? So like, I literally was like, nope, that ain't right. Do it again. So I made her redo it like six or seven times before we got there. So where it was like, she, she knew we were playing, but she was actually really upset with me. Like, oh, he keep making me do this. So she really gave me some of that, wow. that real attitude, that raw attitude. You got it's a, being an independent artist, you got to do everything yourself. So I directed my, I, I came up with the ideas for my video with the guy that I, that I shot it with. We came up with everything. I write my own video treatments for all of my music videos, everything. All of the ideas that you're going to see, come directly from me. And then me and him would just get together and you know find a way to make it come to life. So that was me. I wanted that, uh, we actually shot the video on our anniversary. So yeah, that's why we had the match. She bought the match of outfits that we had. That, that was my wife, the hoodies that said future. That we, she wanted that to signify the, the one thing that we know we have together is that we got our family and we got our future because we didn't been through so much stuff in eight years, man. We got married, I was like 23. <laughs> so, and my wife was like 20. So yeah, we didn't been through so much stuff. We know the one thing we got together is a future because we didn't been through everything that could possibly break a relationship and we still here. So she, that's why she bought those, those hoodies, the, every, the whole match of outfits stuff, that was all her. 
or whatever. Mm-hmm. But yeah, that's what I did. I I, had, I I tried to, I nudged her into leaning into it because I was like, you playing too much. I need you to give me some of that 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 attitude, that Midwest, you know, uh-uh. <laughs> I had to get some of that, man. She is. And when I tell you, she did that. So, yeah. so you yeah. as a director did your thing and she is an actress. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it got yeah, pulled yeah. out. It definitely yeah. came down to the perfect combination of the two. That leads me into speaking about your family. Uh, we talked before, but you know, I guess now nobody's heard this. But you, how you have five kids. Yes, yes. Um, you're married, you've been married for nine years. So there's a stigma about being a family man and being a rap artist, uh-huh. having, a wife, yep. having kids, having being a, a solid father who's there yep. <laughs> for your kids, putting them first, um, and having a legitimate job that you know yep. you go to to support that yep. family, that wife, that kids, those needs. A lot yes. of rap artists grew up watching a different side, so they didn't know. All they saw was what they saw, right? Like they yep. they didn't see the wife who was holding down the kids. They only saw that the mom. That, rap artists heard yeah they they only saw all of that so for one this is a a loaded question for one how how did you learn to separate that for yourself and decide that you were going to be a different rapper who was faithful to his wife and you know went ahead and got married and and you know held down the household for the kids how did you step out of that and do you feel like uh, what kind of an impact do you feel that it's had on your career thus far? Well, I can answer both of those with the uh, same answer. Um, you're right. It, it's very it's very difficult um, because as an artist, especially like um, I feel like I have all of the tools, the capabilities, the mental impact, everything to like really be out there. But I've had to choose my family so many times and I always will because the number one thing I said when I was younger is it this it's all about a decision. Really everything in life is choice driven, I feel like. My mom used to tell me that all the time. And at, when I was younger I made a decision that I wanted to be a father and I wanted to be a husband and break, you know, some of those stereotypes as a black man. And so at every turn, I've always chosen my family and my wife first, period. That's 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 just me. Uh, it has affected my career because there have been a lot of opportunities that I've missed out on, but I just made my mind up that if I'm gonna make it, I'm gonna make it the way, I, I wanna make it being me and being the person that I chose to be. I don't wanna give up on that. I got four boys and right now, raising black black kids, not just, four black boys and one black daughter raising four black boys in this world is is like oh my gosh i never wanted to be that artist that you see some of these kids on tv like on some of these shows like the rap uh rap game or stuff like that where their parents were like into music and then you see them they got all these problems they like y'all might hey i'm so and so from such and such and my daddy was this guy who everybody revered. And y'all might look at him like this, but to me, he was nothing but a bastard. <laughs> he was never there. He didn't. And now all these people have all these issues. I was like, if I bring children into this world, that has to be my number one priority. Number one. So yeah, it's been difficult because like I said, I all but my choice has always been made. I always, always was gonna pick my family first. Uh, music, at the end of the day, is something that I'm great at. It's something that uh, I feel like I have became masterful at. However, I don't want it to define me more than what I do right here in this house, 
what I do in this house with my wife, my kids, I always say now, like looking at it, I, I've made, I'm, I'm actually just doing music. It's fun. If it happens to pick up and, 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 and catch a buzz and stuff like that, yeah, we're going we gonna to go with it or whatever, because I've established like being in all of my kids' lives, like they know who daddy is, you know what I mean? Like I wanted to make that first, that that establish those relationships with them. They know who I am, um, embellish them into different roles in their life. Like I look at kids differently. I feel like my parents, like they had their mind made up how they was gonna raise their kids. I feel like a lot of the generation before us, they had their mind like, oh yeah, well my kids, oh, if they do this, I'm gonna do that. And I wanted to do stuff a little different because I feel like um, I'm 30, I'll be 32 in December. A lot of people in my generation, we didn't have a voice in the house. You see what I'm saying? Like you were a kid, you could be intelligent, but you got to shut up. You need to sit down. I'll, but I'll whoop your ass for this. I'll do this. I'll do that. I'll do this. And so it was a lot of fear. And I was like, I want to break some of those generational curses, generational cycles uh, in my family. I don't want my kids to grow up with that mindset. I want them to have the freedom or whatever. And then I, I could just teach them. It's not my responsibility to decide, oh, I'm, oh, he's going to be a basketball player. No, he gets to decide that. But when he decides that, I'm daddy to be here to help guide him into being a basketball player. And it's crazy because none of my kids want to play sports. They all want to be like, I got one son, he want to be an architect. <laughs> so it's like right now being a dad, he, he wants video games. Guess what video games he gets? Building. He gets Lego. He gets uh, uh, Minecraft. He gets Fortnite. Um, he actually dr draws comic books or whatever. We got him into storytelling because it's also building. You build characters in the story. You have to build a storyline. Everything that he do, everything that he does, we try and gear towards building. So that way he knows, you know, when you get to that that point in your life where you get to become an architect, you're like, wow, my dad been preparing me for this my whole life. But I use things that he likes to prepare him for that rather than just, you know. Sometimes I feel like when I was growing up, you tell somebody you want to be something and they'll use it against you. Our own people. Like, I feel like that's one of the main things we do. We got to fight the other people that are oppressing us. And then we got to fight each other because we didn't learn how to oppress each other. It's like weird. It's the weirdest thing ever. So it's like you tell somebody, yeah, I want to be an architect. Oh, you ain't going to be no architect doing this. Oh, you do this? Oh, oh man. So it's like, nah, I want to be around so that I can deflect all that. Ain't nobody going to put none of that on my kids. Whatever you want to be, we going to make sure that happens. You know what I mean? Daddy going to bust his butt. And even like what you were saying about uh, providing a good role model for them. Uh, I have a, um, a business that I'm entailed in with uh, truck driving. So I really don't have to leave and go do anything. I can stay at home and I, you know, handle business over the phone, talk to people. But I got a job, like an actual job. I get up and go work because I got three boys. I don't want them to see no grown men laying around all day. I want them to see daddy. When you get that embedded in your mind that daddy got up and went to work, you see what I'm saying? Every day, like it's going to make you say, when I get older, I'm going to get up and I'm going to go to work every day. Uh, I like the idea that we got a house. We get to raise our kids in a house because then when they get older, their mindset is going to be to get a house, something that you can own, not just to go get an apartment where you paying somebody and you never can own it. You know what I mean? Like their mindset is going to be, I want. I grew up in a house. I want to get a house. Now that changes what type of jobs they go after. Instead of going after the jobs that I, I did when I was 16, 17, 18, which was McDonald's or you know, working at a shoe store or something like that, they might look to attain higher possibilities because they know if I want to have a house, I got to have a job that provides for me to have a house. So it's just like stuff like that on a mental level that when you're around your kids every day, you see how to fix them. And it's like, I want these things to affect them to be productive, intelligent, independent black individuals that can self succeed in the world by themselves without any help. Wow. Yeah. It's deeper than rap. <laughs> it's deeper than rap. Man, <laughs> on the rapping side, rap. though, 
Look, on the rapping side, though, even when I write my songs, I always try and make sure my songs are to a point to where my kids will be able to listen to it. It ain't going to be too vulgar or too much of this or too much of that to where it's like, nah, I don't want that. I want to make music that my kids can listen to, you know what I mean, and that they can learn from. So it's like I'm very careful about the subject matter that I talk about. Um, I do talk, I cover a wide array of, 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 of topics, but I'm very careful about it because I want it, I want it to be something that I'm happy with and I'm sustained about when, whenever they grow up and they listen to. So, uh, you got rappers right now that make, that's making it hard on their kids and they don't even know. Cause they over there, you could talk about shooting guns and money and all this. And guess what? You make your kid a target when they go to school. Cause they like, oh, oh, that's such and such son. Yeah, let me see if he got them hands. His daddy be talking all of that. And you don't even, I think about all types of stuff like that on different levels that you might not, you see what I'm saying? Like you, you, you could literally be making your kid a target by your rap lyrics. Cause we've mm. made our own selves targets. See murder. I looked at, uh, I was looking at something with Master P. When C Murder got tried, they literally, uh, the prosecution, they asked the court that he only could be referred to as C Murder during the trial. So basically, every time he got referred to, they heard the word murder. Murder. He didn't even get referred to as his real name throughout his entire trial. They got some kind of um, they did they they put some kind of um, um, paperwork in or whatever to the court and they got it passed to where throughout throughout his entire trial everybody had to refer to this man as C murder. So when you look at stuff like that in a system that's meant to oppress us, you got to be real careful as a rap artist. Now you got to be real careful. Like hold on, you know what I'm saying? Like I can't name myself anything because they could use that against me. <laughs> I can't just rap about anything any kind of way. Like, don't do it. If you're going to do it, I'm not saying don't do it. Because, you know, those streets that I grew up in the hood, man, those stories need to be told. But you can be careful and articulate about the way you do it to where you keep yourself and, and relieve yourself of some of the stuff that comes with being a rapper or whatever. I, I ain't trying to be no a rapper and a target. That's, ooh, that's mm. a lot. It's a whole load to carry. So yeah, definitely. How how has being an artist right now I'm trying to think about how I want to word this question, but you know, the state of America today, it's more it's we're not only dealing with uh black and brown men and women being shot by police officers right we're not only dealing with a huge election and democrats versus republican we're dealing with the pandemic <laughs> and yep. pandemic related shutdowns so yep. how has that uh, affected you? And how are you making your way on maneuvering in this time of shutdowns and COVID-19 and everything like that? I love it. Uh, I already live, I, I've always lived kind of a private life. I'm a little old soulish. So I'm not one of those artists that's, that wants to be like on Instagram live every two seconds and just letting people into my life. Uh, but I found it easier to maneuver around the city. Like shooting our video yesterday was a lot easier because it's not, you know, a lot of traffic. It's not a lot of stuff out or whatever. And um, me and my wife, I mean, we, we really like keep to self. So this hasn't, it hasn't really affected our lifestyle. We don't go out much. Or whatever. When I tell people I'm I, how old I am, they look at me like, "Wow, you look a lot younger than that." I'm like, "That's because I don't do nothing. All I all we really do is spend time with the kids." And it's crazy because I'm I'm blessed to have five, four here right now because, like, they get to play with each other. Because <laughs> you know you don't, you can't necessarily play with other kids, right? You don't know who got COVID or if their parents are taking care. So the fact that they got enough of them to you know come up with stuff and play with each other. 
and, and develop their relationships getting uh, closer together is uh, very beneficial. So I don't look at it as um, um, every delay is in my favor. I look at it like that, man. Every delay, everything that happens, you have to use it for your favor. Um, that, that video that we watched, Colder Than, I actually had, uh, I told you we filmed a video around uh, my, me and my wife's anniversary, which is April 16th. Well, right after that, George Floyd, the George Floyd situation happened. So if you want to talk about directly, I got two situations where that happened this year. It directly affected my release of the song and the video because everybody's attention was geared towards something else. And it was like, oh man, it made me feel bad too because I had the release schedule or whatever to drop. And now it's like, oh, in the wake of this, I'm dropping a song. You know what I mean? I'm like, oh man. So I learned from it um, because I had already had that schedule, but I learned from it. I had my, I was about to drop my, uh, my album was supposed to come out on September the 3rd. But prior to that, a couple of days prior to that, the shooting of Jacob Blake occurred. And so I, I literally pushed everything back because that's way bigger than me dropping some music. You know what I mean? As being an underground artist and independent artist, I have a group of fans. I have people that listen to me, but it was more important for me to, to, to put something out that was more uh, that was more central to, to what was going on at the time. So instead of dropping the whole album, I just dropped one song and it was more related to the subject matter that was going on, you know what I mean, at that time with, with us having to deal with oppression or whatever, just really like, I, I dropped the song Call Alive. I, I think I sent that to you too, man. You got it, man, y'all go check out Alive. It came out September 30th it's on all streaming outlets, all platforms. It's funny too, cause this song is a Republican, but it, it's a, it, it actually gravitates to a lot of us, to black people. Cause that song is really about like living, it's, it's about my life growing up as a black person in Houston, basically. And how you just want to feel alive, but you got oppression from this side, oppression from your side. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like I was just talking about a little earlier, adults that may be even in your family that's telling you, you can't do this, you can't do that. So it's like, man, I don't, you know, I just want to feel alive. I just want to feel like freedom that I feel like. And, and I feel like that's what a lot of people in America, like of minorities or black and brown communities, we just want to feel alive. We just want to be able to do what we want to do or whatever. It ain't nothing illegal. It ain't nothing that, but you know, you just want to do what you want to do and not feel the pressure to, oh, you need to be like this. I look at the Black Lives Matter movement for, per se. And it's supposed, to, it's supposed to be something that's influential for our people. But you have a lot of people that might use that against you at certain times. Like I had friends that was asking me, are you gonna go out in a, a march? And I was like, well, man, I can't. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm here with my kids. And they was like, oh man, you not for the cause. I'm like, dude, I'm raising four black boys. That's intelligent, that's gonna be, how am I not for the, I, and, a, and a daughter. How am I not for the cause? If anything, creating a new generation that's going to be able to capitalize off of some of these movements, just because I don't come to one march, now you putting me, oh, if you're not for it, you against it. It's like, hold on, I am for it. I just, you know what I mean? Like, people, we we oppress ourselves. It's like, you you making me your enemy and I'm on your side. So, yeah, man, it's, it's, real, it's real difficult or whatever, but... um. I feel like, like I said, you got to make everything in your favor or whatever. And I, and, and I rely on God really to do that. Like he, a lot of the opportunities I get, this opportunity right here, this is, man, everything dealing with crowded streaming, dealing with uh, uh, DJ 4,500, it was a blessing. Just the fact of me knowing him growing up or whatever and, and, and being working on music, because he didn't even know I was doing music. But when I started sending him stuff, he was like, dang, dude, you, you nice with it. Like, hold on. Man, let me let you know about some of the stuff we got going on. And that opened up doors for me, you know, even during the pandemic to where, hey, you know, we got stuff going on. This interview right here, it's a blessing, taking advantage of it or whatever. So, yeah, man, it's it's difficult uh, dealing with the pandemic, dealing with the state of how everything is right now. But uh, I'm a very tempered person and got five kids. You got to have a lot of patience. So I have a lot of that. And uh, 
yeah, I'm, 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 I'm ready for the long haul because that's the way that I chose. I chose the independent route or whatever, you know? So it's, it's, it, it might take a long time, but you know, mm -hmm. it makes sense when it's, when it, when it, uh, when it all comes together and when it happens. That is beautiful. Yeah. Well, to wrap up, tell me about some advice that you can give an independent artist, a music artist who might watch this and feel like they're not making moves, like they can't achieve their goals, like they are just lost right now on what the next step is to take. What, what advice can you give that independent artist? First of all, be yourself. Stay true to yourself. Um, I feel like it's 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 better to go through life and to do things your way, and, and stay true stay true to yourself and your principles, because you don't. It's better to not make it, and I know this sounds crazy or whatever, because you know we all want to achieve success, but it's better to not make it and still be you then to make it and look back and be like, man, I did a whole bunch of stuff that ain't me to get here. Cause then once you finally have it, you still not gonna be okay with it. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, uh, you know, it's not, uh, this ain't necessarily what I wanted or this, you know, this is not what I needed. So I feel like that's number one, stay true to yourself. Number two, you always, 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 want to talk about relevant things. You know what I mean? Like, um, and, and find other ways to hustle other than just music. It's so many other opportunities out there. Like, it's so many different, when you look at a house, it's so many different interests into a house, right? But everybody's so hung up on coming in the front door. And it's like, that might not be the way for everybody to get in the house. You see what I'm saying? Some people might get in through the window. You see what I mean? Some people might not, some people might get in the house because they got a job that that house needs help with. Like the house might need, oh, the garage messed up. Boom, I know how to fix garages. You know what I mean? I got a friend right now, uh, my boy Ace Kid. Uh, man, this dude is so productive and it's because of the fact that he finds a niche. He will go to studio sessions and he'll be like, hey, I'll go get y'all snacks if y'all need it just to make himself be able to be in the room. And then once he in the room, now his expertise can come into play because he writes, he writes, he raps, he sings, everything. So now it's like, it's beneficial because of the fact that it's like, he didn't went and got y'all snacks and y'all looking at, then next thing you know, somebody get hung up on a lyric or don't know what to say. He be like, I can help out. Oh, you know, I could give my advice. So now he didn't found his way in the house. You see what I'm saying? Just by going to go get somebody a bag of chips. So make yourself available. It ain't like, a, it, right now, a lot of people are not making it in music because of their music. And I feel like it's been like that for a long time. It's a lot of people that are making it because they're likable or because they are doing other things that can help achieve success. Uh, you were talking about the New Orleans Saints earlier uh, as a team. And uh, I have a very good example I could use. Steve Kerr, he's the coach for the Golden State Warriors. Steve Kerr played on the team with Michael Jordan. He was a backup point guard. He still won three rings. Then because of the fact that he knew how to play his role on a team, that elevated him to be able to go to San Antonio and win two more rings. So now he had five rings, but he still played his role. He never tried to, oh, I want to try and be the superstar. I'm going to be that. I want to be this. He played his role. And now look where it graduated him to. Now he's the head coach and the face of one of the, the best teams of like the last 10 years, the Golden State Warriors, because he was around greatness. He soaked up the greatness from Michael Jordan, Scottie Pippen, Phil Jackson. He went to San Antonio, soaked up the greatness from Tim Duncan, David uh, David Robinson. Uh, uh, their coach name is Greg Popovich, Tony Parker. All of these guys are all Hall of Famers. 
Steve Kerr as a player was not going to be a Hall of Famer. He didn't play enough minutes, didn't do enough. But he's going to go into the Basketball Hall of Fame now because of his career, because he knew how to become a part of a team, a successful team. Now he And now he's also able to transition that stuff. And now he is the face. Now he is a superstar or whatever. It might take more time or whatever. But his path, because of the fact that he knew how to become a part of a team, he knew how to play his role in every situation, it elevated him. Uh, there's a scripture that I always follow in the Bible, and it says, the humble, the humble shall be uplifted. So I always try and stay humble. Never never try and take that, that attitude like I'm better than anybody or I can't learn nothing from that or I can't figure this out. You can learn something from everything. So that's what I would tell them. Find your niche. It's not always one entrance into a house. Find your entrance <laughs> or, or create you an entrance into there and know how to play your role until you can achieve the level of success that you're that you're seeking know how to play your role or whatever you got so, like i said it's just so many different examples but that's one that i really like even on that go to state team i'm gonna hold on one with them say andre igadala when steve curry came there andre igadala was the star was like one of the stars of the team steve curry asked him to sit on the bench and come off the bench and be the sixth man he ends up doing that for the entire season without pouting about it or being upset about it or anything. The team ends up winning a, a magnificent amount of games. And then when they made it to the NBA Finals, what ended up happening? They needed somebody to hold LeBron James. So now Andre Iguodala gets back, inserted back into the starting lineup. And because of his defense on LeBron James, he ended up winning the NBA Finals MVP. After being the sixth man the entire season, he won the finals MVP because they beat uh, the Cleveland Cavaliers the first time they go to state, won a championship. All because he knew how to play his role on the team. He knew how to wait, play his role, have patience, and when it was his time to shine, he took advantage of the opportunity. I feel like that's the best advice you can offer anybody. Don't try and force it. Let it come to you. Because when it comes to you, it's going to all come. It's going to overflow. And you'll be able to achieve the success that you want to achieve. Wow. Couldn't have said it better myself. Yay. Yeah. A-plus styles, y'all. Um, when So the album is out now. It's on... Crowded uh, it's, streaming, of course. Yeah, it's available for pre-order right now. It's not dropping until October 28th. So it's available for pre-order. Okay. But it's not, not out October yet. October 28th. Yeah. Yeah. So October 28th is dropping. How can people find you on all of your platforms and follow all of the things that you have going on? Um and how can they pre-order the album? Um, it's available. Uh, it'll be available everywhere. iTunes, Spotify, um, YouTube. It'll be available everywhere. Um, everybody can find me on Instagram or Twitter at A underscore plus underscore styles. Um, yeah, I, 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 I don't post too much. I like to keep stuff private and keep it a secret before I drop it and stuff like that. But uh, uh, anybody want to contact me, anybody trying to get with me, uh, I'm not just a rapper. Uh, I'm a writer. I also, I do ghost writing. I've done it. I've been doing that for since I was about 18 years old. Uh, I also write uh, R&B. Mm -hmm. I do everything. Anything that has to do with uh, music, yeah. I'll be I'll be able to uh, help you out with that, assist you with that. I have a couple of producers also that are real dope that I can patch people into. Um, like I said, finding my niche, I do a lot of stuff. You know, we got a lot going on. Uh, I'm a strategist and I'm a marketer too. This whole scheme behind my my uh, my album, I came up with that the Republican Democrat, the Red Album, Blue Album, everything. So I can help out in many different ways with music or with anything that's dealing with the culture. Um, clothing design. I got cl the clothing is coming next. 
I got a lot of people that's asking me to get involved in clothing. So uh, it's going to come next. It just got to be right for me. It got to be right, right for me. But uh, yeah, Instagram and Twitter at A underscore plus underscore styles. My email, my phone number, all that other information is there in case anybody wants to contact me. Uh, and yeah, y'all can find the album. It will be on Crowded Streaming. It will sure. be on will. Crowded Streaming. I'm gonna be, yes. I'm gonna be, I'm gonna be working on getting that uploaded. It's, it's, it's been a little difficult for me to uh, navigate it and figure it out, but I'm gonna uh, work on getting that uploaded now or whatever, so that way yeah, we, we can have it on there first. Yeah, I actually have a video to uh sh to send to you after this is over. Uh, Crowded Streaming just dropped a video taking people through how to upload music, change yes. things, everything yes. like that. So guys, that leads me to saying download Crowded Streaming, Black Owned. We're yes. doing things Black different owned. in yes. 2020. So, so um yes yeah, support black owned and it's not just your average app because we are supporting independent music artists it yes. ain't about the biggest the biggest artists over there um and they pay for streams yes, so the more yes. streams you get then though of course like any other app that's out there yeah. only difference is uh, that it's black owned and yep. uh, H-Town. We're, supporting H-Town H-Town. Operated. we're supporting our own and we are pushing forward in a whole new direction in this industry speaking of speaking of i got a commercial look i uh i took the liberty to uh uh input some uh crowded streaming stuff in my video that, that I'm finna have, uh, the new one that I'm finna have coming out. So, uh, Ooh, yeah. yeah yay. It's gonna be oh, it's gonna my be God. We, uh, we're going to have to blast that everywhere. Yeah. You know yes. it. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, also, yes. shout out to Evo uh, Clothing. That's okay. Low Trillinger's uh, line. So, weren't they gang and don't bang? Shout out to Crowded Streaming. Yeah. Uh, Rocky Road. Rocky. Yes, shout out to you. This was a, <laughs> man, this was a, I appreciate you. This was a dope interview. I love this experience. We got to do this again. Yes. Uh, we got to do this again. When the when the Blue Album drop, I got to yes. come back. Man, yes. I got to come, gotta back. come back. You got to come back. Yes. Blue, we do the uh, Still Can Blue, which uh, I, I'm trying to target that date for uh, after the election or whatever. Uh, so it'll be around probably like the second second week of November. I'm just trying to target it uh, based. And then also I want to see, you know, what we do with this red or whatever, because it's self-promoted. Uh, I ain't got a lot behind it right now or whatever. I'm going to put a lot behind it, though, because ne- I feel like it needs to get out there. It's like, mm. yeah, 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 we need to, I, I feel like I need to uh, input engrave myself into this little uh this houston culture that we got you know what i mean hey we're gonna talk offline we gonna talk offline got you, got <laughs> you. can't give away all my secrets right that's a bit that's a bit <laughs> all right guys well thank you for tuning in like i said download that crowded streaming and uh pre-order that album is gonna be out on October 28th. Follow A Plus Styles on all his social media. And yeah, yeah. I'm out. All right. <laughs>